in Kami, there lived a man named Kikusaburo. He lived in a fine manor house that was surrounded by vegetable fields, rice fields, and beautiful mountains with forested trees. All this had come to him from his family. Now, Kikusaburo was not a bad man. It was just that he hated to work, and he loved pleasure. And he had not even gotten into his 30s before he had huge debts to pay off. And so, little by little, he started selling off some of the fields, some of the rice fields. And then, as the debts continued to mount, the forests, the mountains. As time passed, all the land and the forested mountains that he could see from the house were gone. There was just the land around the manor house, which was still filled with its plush carpets, fine ceramic glazed vases and painted scrolls, ebony furnishings with brocaded fabrics. There was only left behind the house one mountain. This one was thick with trees. Kikusaburo looked out at it one night as it fell into the shadow and said, tomorrow I will not sleep late. I will rise early. I will climb that mountain as I have not done since I was a child. But I will not play. I will take a tablet. I will count each tree. I will note what type each tree is so that when I sell the last mountain, I will know exactly what timber there is, what is available, and I will get the best price. And he did rise early that morning, that following morning. <coughs> Up he went. He remembered the trail where he had not been, but he paid attention to the details. He was Kate, not Joe, in this case. He wrote down every kind of tree, kept a tally of how many there were. And before the sun had reached its midday height, he was on his way back down. He followed a stream that started near the top of the mountain. Oh, yes, he said, I remember this stream. It leads to a lake. And as he went around a bend, there was that lake. And around the lake, the trees were th so thick that even the midday sun did not penetrate. So it was dark and cool. Kikusaburo was sweating from climbing the mountain and all that work. He sat down, leaned against a boulder, and said, I remember as a child, there were so many frogs little ones, deep ones. And as he sat there still, the frogs began to sing again. Kikusaburo rested his head against the boulder. He listened to the frogs. He felt the exertion of the morning drain away until he felt a hand on his shoulder. It was cold and wet. And when he turned to look, he saw a man, a creature. He was not too tall, bent. He had a mouth as wide as that of a frog and eyes that protruded like the eyes of a frog. And when he spoke, Kikusaburo was not sure whether he was a man or a frog. Kikusaburo, sir, you will pardon me for interrupting your nap. We have all watched you this morning climbing and counting. We beg you not to sell the mountains. It's someone who will cut the trees. For if you do, the sun will shine and dry and pack the soil of the mountain the lake will be smaller. 
And then when the rains come, they will slide down that hillside with no roots or growing things to hold them. And the silt will wash into the stream and then into the lake and we will not be able to breathe. I beg you, Kikusaburo. And as he bent his head, Kikusaburo looked down and saw that his robes, which had appeared to be of multicolored green silk, were dripping with lake water. They were made of the many different colors of weeds that grew in the lake. I, I cannot do this, Kikusaburo said. The frog chief lifted his head. He put his webbed fingers on Kikusaburo's hand. So icy cold were those fingers that Kikusaburo startled. There was no one there. Not even any wetness from the dripping from the frogman's robe. Kikusaburo stood and walked down. And when he went inside his manor house, he looked at everything that was there and said goodbye to it. Because of the next day, he went to the largest village and sent word that all antique dealers should come. They did. Oh, they came. And they argued with each other over prices. They took away everything, and Kikusaburo had enough to pay his debts. All that was left in the house was his bed and a white paper screen worth nothing. Kikusaburo lay down and went to sleep. He was at peace. When he woke the next morning, before he had opened his eyes, he heard small, medium, and large frog sounds. Oh, he said, <laughs> I must still be dreaming. It is as if I am out at the lake. They are so close. But when he opened his eyes, it was not the woods, but the ceiling of his own house. He swung his feet around, and when they touched the floor, it was wet. He saw small, medium, and large frog prints. And his eyes followed those prints to the screen, which was painted with frogs swimming, sitting, leaping, sleeping. He smiled and stood in front of the screen, and he could smell not only the musky, watery, lakey smell from the frogs, but the wet paint. Kikusaburo walked outside. He started picking up the rubbish that was in the yard. He saw some boards that had fallen off the outside of the house, and he rummaged in a shed and found a hammer and some nails and fastened them on, and then went back and looked at the screen again. He found a cloth and started polishing the doorknobs in his house. From that day on, he looked at the screen, he laughed. He pulled the weeds from that rubbishy yard and planted some vegetables. Then, in the wet parts of the yard, he planted rice. And little by little, he enlarged and was able to buy back first a small field, and then eventually all the fields. His house stayed empty until he married and had children, and then their beds and their tables and their chairs, they began to fill it up, but in a simple way this time. And eventually, he bought back all the surrounding mountains. 
only the one behind him was still filled with trees. When Kikusaburo grew old, his family cared for him and cared for the land. One morning, they found that he had gone to the other world. That evening, they noticed that the screen was fading. And in the days to come, it became again a plain white screen. But the lake of the cloaking frogs is still there today. If you travel to Japan, you could sit as Kikusaburo did and listen to the frogs. The screen was lost, but the lake and the mountains and the trees and the fields and the food are there.